What's up, Nerd Gen Nation, and welcome to History Of. I'm your host and resident superhero nerd, Aaron Waller, and this is a series where we do a deep dive into various comic book characters, both heroes and villains, and give a little bit more insight as to who they are and why they do what they do. And in today's video, we're talking about a character that has been a long-time member on the MCU wishlist and is finally going to be either getting a movie or TV series, and that's Nova. Nova was created by Marv Wolfman and first appeared in The Man Called Nova No. 1 in 1976. Nova, also known as Richard Ryder, was a New York high school student who was selected by the last surviving member of Xandar's elite Nova Corps, Roman Day, who was dying and chose Ryder to replace him. Ryder is given the uniform and powers of a Nova Centurion, but little instruction on how to use them. He ends up taking up the name Nova and becomes a superhero and fights various costume supervillains such as Condor, Powerhouse, Diamond Head, and a whole lot more while also teaming up with heroes like Spider-Man and Thor. He initially hid his identity, but later reveals it to his family only 21 issues into his series after his father was injured as a result of Nova trying to stop a hooded gang. Nova would later discover Day's spaceship orbiting Earth and uses it to journey to Xandar where he would join the war against the Skrulls, and it's only after defeating the Skrulls that he returns to Earth and is released from his duties on Xandar and relinquishes his powers. Upon his return to Earth, however, he struggles to readjust due to his failure to complete high school. While unknown to him, Xandar is utterly destroyed in an attack by Nebula. With the help of a character called Night Thrasher, Nova regains his powers and joins the new Warriors superhero team. He would then eventually encounter Garth and Saul, a former Nova Corps Centurion who had been driven insane by absorbing too much of the Nova Force. Saul is seeking more power so he can restore Xandar to its former glory. He then strips Nova of his powers and transports him back to Xandar where he eventually gets defeated by Ryder and he witnesses the reformation of the Nova Corps and receives the rank of Centurion Prime. He would then be assigned to protect Earth but must navigate the dual lives as a member of both the Nova Corps and the New Warriors. That is until Nova Zero Zero, a Nova Corps member from an alternate timeline, prepares for him to stop the Death Storm, a cosmic storm which is coming to destroy Earth. Nova would decide to defy the Xandar Queen to stop the Death Storm and is temporarily stripped of his powers and rank, but is then given his powers back when his replacement sacrifices himself. In Annihilation, Nova would eventually leave the new warriors and is summoned to Xandar alongside the entire Nova Corps, which has been fully mobilized to respond to the Annihilation Wave, a force from the Negative Zone led by Analis. The Corps would end up being wiped out in a surprise attack, leaving Ryder as the only sole surviving member. He would then contact the Xandarian Worldmind, a supercomputer that uploads itself and the entire Nova Force into Ryder, greatly enhancing his abilities. And in nearly a year-long campaign, resists the wave's advances across the galaxy, Nova would eventually take command of a small unit called the United Front and leads them into a conquered territory and eventually engages Analis in personal combat and is finally able to kill him. After the war, Nova returns to Earth to rest and finds none of the heroes of Earth answers his call for help in the Annihilation War as they were all fighting each other during Civil War. After seeing the devastation left on the remaining heroes, Nova returns to space feeling out of place on Earth and disturbed by what's become of it. He would have various other space battles and come across the Guardians of the Galaxy and work with them several times, that is until the Secret Invasion storyline, where he learns of the Secret Invasion plans and heads for Earth. He arrives just in time to stop one of the attacks on a facility, but scientists take the world mind from his brain and use the supercomputer to jumpstart a project known as the Quantum Flask. And just as a Skrull warship is about to attack, it's destroyed by a band of Nova Centurions who then declare their allegiance to Nova. Nova then learns that the world mind has been recruiting for the core without even telling him. But when he learns that Ego the Living Planet is among the new recruits, he becomes enraged and tries to battle the world mind, which as a result, he's stripped of his rank and ejected from the Nova Corps once again. Man, this guy just cannot catch a break. But because his body has become so dependent on the Nova Force, he ends up almost dying as a result of being away from it for so long. As a temporary measure, he borrows the quantum bands from Wendell Vaughn and becomes Quasar. Using his new abilities, he rescues the core from the War of Kings, Ego ends up being removed as a Centurion, but that's not before most of the new recruits end up being slaughtered, to which he ends up having to train the remaining new Centurions, including his younger brother, Robert. During the Secret Avengers arc, Nova's recruited by Steve Rogers and sent to Mars to investigate Roxxon's operations and discovers a second Serpent Crown secreted there. Shortly after the mission, however, Nova's called away to deal with the events of of the Thanos Imperative, and Steve Rogers confirms that he has left the team. The Thanos Imperative story finds a lost Nova Corps ship appearing from the Terran space-time 
known as The Fault, where Nova and a fellow hero Darkhawk find themselves having to fight against their younger selves and relive events from their past. After escaping, Nova faces Thanos alongside Star-Lord and pulls the Nova Force from the rest of the core for extra strength. The two are able to hold Thanos back just a few minutes as they fight over the Cosmic Cube which has the power to send them home. Nova then charges up the cube with the Nova Force to create a doorway for Star-Lord, intending that he and Thanos end up staying behind but Thanos also is able to escape too. Star-Lord ends up getting out but Nova is unable to prevent Thanos from escaping as well. Then a new Nova, Sam Alexander, takes over and locates the Xandarian world mind, where Ryder's consciousness awakens within the world mind during the encounter. It's later revealed that Ryder and the world mind survived the closure of the fault and remain trapped in the Cancerverse, but he ends up using the Nova Force and allowing him to escape the Cancerverse returns to Earth and then visits his surviving family members. He then finally encounters Alexander and they begin to work together. However, Ryder also realizes that he's become a portal to the Cancerverse, which repeatedly attempts to invade Earth through him. He tries to rid himself of this burden and is eventually freed by Alexander who has followed him. The two escape the Cancerverse once again using the Cosmic Cube carried by Thanos' Cancerverse doppelganger. Ryder and Alexander end up resuming their lives and relationship on Earth while continuing as Nova Korsman. Now as I mentioned at the top, Nova hasn't appeared in any live action as of yet, but he has appeared in various video games such as Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. And though he has appeared in animated series like Guardians of the Galaxy and Ultimate Spider-Man, this was actually the second Nova, Sam Alexander, and not the original Richard Rider. Now Rider himself doesn't have any powers or abilities until he receives the power from the Nova Force which all Nova Corps Centurions also have access to. This gives him superhuman powers including flight, strength, speed, durability, as well as the power to absorb energy directed against him and release it as pulses and beams, either from specific parts of his body or from his entire body. In terms of his uniform, Nova wears the standard Zendarian Star Core uniform, designed to accommodate his powers without being damaged by them. The uniform is highly resistant to damage including outer space conditions, functions as life support, and is even airtight. His helmet, however, contains additional features that he has at his disposal, including telescopic sights, night vision, heat vision, and a visual heads-up display for tracking energy signatures. It also just happens to have the ability to be rigid like a helmet or flexible as a cloth mask. And now for my favorite part of history of the recommended reading section where I give you some options to get to know Nova a little bit better but even more get to see him in action. First we have his debut in The Man Called Nova. I always recommend the beginning because it's a great place to start with getting to know any character just that much better. But if you want to see Nova in a bit more of a team setting, I recommend the new Warriors. He goes by Kid Nova for a while, but he's still the same guy and definitely worth checking out. Annihilation Nova is also a great comic run if you want to see the character go through a gauntlet of bad guys and having to basically save all of his kind. The title comic Nova from 2007 is a great follow up as Nova is the sole remaining member of the Nova Corps and he's all alone in having to fight to regain Law and Order within the galaxy. And of course there is the Thanos narrative which is a great story that sees Nova teaming up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and having to take on one of the toughest villains. I highly recommend this one especially if you're a big fan of the MCU as you'll see plenty of characters that you're already familiar with. And of course you can always check out stories like Secret Invasions or Secret Avengers but they're not so much centered on Nova and it's basically an amalgamation of a ton of different characters. So he's in them but you just won't get a ton of exposure to him specifically so I recommend the other books instead. So those are some of the major things you need to know about Nova. Did you learn anything in this video you may not have known otherwise? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and also while you're down there be sure to leave me a comment as to suggesting any characters you would like to see on a future episode of History Of. Your suggestion just might be next week's video. And also while you're down there don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you miss out on any future videos from me or the rest of the Nerdgenic team. And also be sure to give us a like and follow across all social media platforms at Nerdgenic so you miss out on any special news, announcements, or articles at Nerdgenic.com. And if you just so happen to want to be a very kind member of the Nerdgenic Nation and want to contribute to make sure this channel only continues to get better, make sure to check out our recently launched Patreon with the link down in the description. But in the meantime, if you want even more video content from us, check out these videos on screen, like my recent video talking about that deleted Joker scene from the Batman, or you can check out the History of playlist right over here, which gets a new character and new video added every single Saturday. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. And we hope to see you in the next video.